Sarah Ladipomenica, and I'm happy to do this little interview for WAW, Words Are Work, and I hope that what I have to share will be helpful to people who are uh, beginning the writing process or aspiring to be writers. So why write? Well, I think you should write if you're passionate about writing and if you feel that you cannot not write. I would say don't write if you're not passionate about it. Writing takes a lot of time and energy. It's not easy. So there has to be that fundamental passion there. Uh, don't write if you think you're going to make a lot of money. I hope you do make a lot of money, but that's not the norm. I would say uh, make sure that you have friends who understand that writers can be irritable. Uh, <laughs> you have friends that will be friends with you even if you're not in touch with them for a while. And I'm really feeling this right now because I'm currently uh, beginning a new project and I always find this to be the hardest part of writing. So I'm very irritable and uh, not fun to be around and I'm not staying in touch with my friends. So. So in terms of my work, so I am a novelist, a short story writer, I write articles and essays as well. And I, I think, well, certainly my novels have been very much inspired by um, finding that there are stories that I want to read, but I'm not finding the stories. Um, and I think Toni Morrison once said, you know, if there's a story that you want to to read and you can't find it, then you should write it. And so that's driven, it drove independence. I wasn't finding love stories. I wasn't finding much historical fiction. Um, similarly with Like a Mule bringing ice cream to the sun, uh, I wasn't finding stories about older women, uh, certainly almost no stories about older immigrant women or black women. Um, so that really was behind the writing of those two novels. Um, I'm very interested in people's lives. I'm always eavesdropping. I love programs that have to do with people's lives. Desert, Desert Island Discs is a BBC program that I just love. I love reading, you know, interviews with people. The Proust Questionnaire, for example, is always of interest to me. Um, you know, what brings you greatest happiness? What are your greatest fears? Who or what has been your greatest love? And all those things I find interesting so that's definitely motivation for me um and then i think the third thing for me is i just i love language and as i was thinking about today i was looking at words are work and i was jotting down words are whimsical words are wonderful words are waggish that's a new word look that up uh it was a new word for me at least until yesterday words are weird words are what Words are wahala, words are wasted. So anyway, as you can see, I'm just sort of riffing on, on, on words and I enjoy that. I enjoy poetry very much. Poetry inspired the title of my second book, which was two lines taken from a poem. I, and I want to move now to something else I've been asked about, which is process. And this is a question that writers get asked a lot. What's your writing process? Do you write in the mornings? Do you write in the afternoons? Are you like Zadie Smith who can only write in on computers? Well, she says she only writes on computers. Uh, are you like Hemingway who liked to drink a lot of wine when he was writing or maybe James Baldwin who always seemed to have a cigarette when he was writing and so forth. Um, I have a glass of water <laughs> when I'm writing, so uh, my story is not very interesting, I'm afraid. I don't have any magical rabbit's foot or anything like that next to me when I write. But I, I think the main thing I want to say about the process of writing, I think people ask that question because they think, you know, what's the magic? What can I do? And you'll only find what the magic is when you start writing and, you, and figure out your routine uh, for yourself. I think often when that question is asked, there are other things that are not mentioned that are very important and one of them is very basic. I think if you're well rested, or at least for me, I find that I can be more creative. Uh, I often find in terms of my writing practice, if I'm stuck, uh, that going out for a walk or a run, listening to music can be really helpful. Uh, listening to music right now has been very helpful. 
I've been listening to quite a bit of Nina Simone, um, Fight the Power, something I've been listening to. I have to say I'm recording this at the beginning of 2017, so <laughs> you can, uh, there's a particular climate in the United States that's uh, motivated some of my music listening. The other thing that I want to say about process is that, you know, often when writers are talking, they talk about, they talk as if they write on their own. And of course, you do write on your own, but you are inspired by the world. You're inspired by other people. Uh, you often will bounce ideas off people, uh, get people to read drafts of your work and so forth. So I think it's important to recognize that that's actually a very vital part for, for almost all writers of the writing process. I also want to share with you something that I learned from the writer Sarah Waters. I heard her speak about writing and she talked about keeping a writing journal and how helpful it was to keep notes on how the writing was going so that the next time that you did a project you could refer to the journal and see Oh, I remember feeling stuck. You know, what did I do when I was feeling stuck? Um, and so it's something that I did uh, halfway through the writing of Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun. And I was just looking at my notes and it's really helpful to see how I was able to break through with some issues that I was having with the writing. Um, and at the very beginning of the journal, I wrote Writing is a solitary endeavor, at least when you put the words on the page. And so to have a record of the land that we traverse, to be in conversation, as it were, with our writing selves is important. So that's one tip I would suggest uh, people think about keeping a writing journal. And I want to talk about the issue of fa failure. Uh, which I will rename challenges or obstacles to the writing. Uh, all writers receive rejections. You try and get something published and it, no one's interested or it seems that no one's interested. You get rejection letter after rejection letter. I have received lots of those, many more rejections than, than acceptances. Uh, I've also been on the other side. I've been a book judge, a juror. I have been on selection committees for writing residencies. So I know how difficult it is to make those decisions. And I also know that there is a big element of chance, frankly, and subjectivity when it comes to the judging of things. So I want to say to all writers, I want to say two things. Writing is a lot of work. So don't be discouraged by rejections. Uh, see what you can learn. If, if any feedback is given and keep working on your craft, but also just don't think that because something is rejected, it's not good. It may need some work, but it may also be that the people who read what you wrote um, just didn't get it. Uh, so, but above all, I just would encourage people to try not to be discouraged, but of course, that's easier said than done. And of course, every time I receive a rejection, I, I take it, I tend to take it personally. So um, <clears throat> I need to practice what I'm preaching as well. Vis-a-vis -vis writing, I want to encourage writers to be generous. I've already mentioned that part of the writing process is often getting feedback from others. Uh, you often will ask friends to read drafts. I get requests every day from writers for me to read something um, and I try and do I try and do as much as I possibly can. Um, so I think I'm saying be generous on two levels. Be generous to yourself in terms of sometimes having to say no, I'm sorry, I, I can't help. But also remember that you will be asking for help along the way, always. And so it's important that you also Oh, try to be generous to the extent that you can. And then I finally want to say that, you know, there's this, uh, you often hear the saying that everything has been written before, that there are no new stories under the sun. And I would say, I don't believe that. I think there have been a lot of stories written about middle-class European American, mainly white lives. 
uh, but not so much about other lives. So I'm saying specifically to Nigerian writers, know that you have endless, endless stories to write. So be encouraged by that and that people want to read those stories. All the best with writing. Enjoy the process, enjoy the ride um, as much as you can. And I look forward to reading your work in months and years to come.